Hello and welcome back to Locator Gaming. I'm continuing on playing the Knight of the Zealot campaign with the Jacqueline Fine and Nathaniel Cho starter decks. On the last scenario of Knight of the Zealot here, um, the Devourer below. I upgraded, I uh, got some more s upgraded spell cards for Jacqueline and I honestly can't remember what I upgraded for Nathaniel. So when we see upgraded cards come in, um, I'll make sure to show them to you just so you can see which ones I upgraded. <clears throat> so for setup here, I gathered all the cards. I got the main path location into play. And we have to choose four of these Arkham Woods cards at random. Four out of the six. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Put the other two out of play. <clears throat> and these start out connected to the main path here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we got to pick a rand. Let's see, we got the ritual site and the uh, Omerd Hoth. I'm never going to say that correctly. Card set aside over there. I thought that I had a die to pick at random. <clears throat> I don't know what I did with it. So let's do this. We'll flip this a couple of times. Uh, so if it's one pip, it's either one of these two. If it's two pips, it's over here. So it's one pip, it's one of these two, and then one or two. One. So this gets just sh shuffled in. Yep. So we'll shuffle those in in a second. The other three just get set aside to go back into the box later. <clears throat> then check the number of names recorded under the cultist who got away. That's zero. We got all six of the cultists last time. So we won't be putting any extra doom out. We have to add this to the chaos bag. And it did not get past midnight, so we do not have to discard two cards at random. And the ghoul priest is not alive. <clears throat> so that's set up. After a frantic nighttime search throughout Arkham, you have tracked down and questioned several members of the cult. Your findings are disturbing. They claim to worship a being known as Umurthoth, a monstrous entity from another realm. You're able to confirm much of Lita's story. The cult is agitated over the destruction of a ghoul lair. However, a surprising detail also turns up. The one who invaded the lair and set this night's events in motion was none other than Lita Chandler herself. You're not sure why this important detail was omitted from Lita's story. She did tell you only as much as was necessary to draw you into her conflict. No, did she tell you only as much as was necessary to draw her into her conflict? Question mark. But in another light, she seems to be fighting to protect the city of Arkham from a terrible menace. The final piece of the puzzle was found written in a journal possessed by one of the cultists. It describes a dark ritual to be performed deep within the woods south of Arkham this very night. According to the journal, the ritual's completion will open a gate and bring forth the cult's dark master into this world. If the cult is not stopped, Lita warns, there's a possibility that Umerthoth's vengeance will consume all in its path. Frightened but determined to stop the ritual, you head into the woods. <clears throat> so we've got an agenda here with, if we put four doom on it, it will advance. From interrogating members of the conspiracy within Arkham, you have learned that they are performing a rite of vengeance in response to the destruction of one of their master's lairs. You have entered the woods outside Arkham to try to stop them. The woods seem unnaturally cold and filled with a deathly silence. Then investigating the trail, we need three clues to advance it. The evidence you've gathered has led you to the woods south of Arkham, where you believe a ritual to summon a being called Umerthoth is about to take place. Stealing your resolve, you set forth deeper into the woods, hoping to find the site of this ritual. All right. Give this a quick one. Oops. 
I think I upgraded both of her Azure Flames and then maybe got her, because I might have had one point left over to maybe I upgraded one of, one of her robes or something that makes spells cheaper and gives her a couple health protection. I'll put that in the bag. Familiar Spirit, Astral Travel, Dark Future. We don't want Defiance, Ineffable Truth, and Scrying Mirror. I think I'm going to mulligan all five of these. Although Ineffable Truth is a good evasion spell. Nope. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we got Clairvoyance, we got Hypnotic Gaze. The Robes of Endless Night is probably good to get out. That helps reduce the cost of spells and Crystal Pendulum. All right. Not the greatest start, I don't think, for Jacqueline's deck. Her hand, I mean. And Nathaniel, see if he can get some assets, his boxing gloves or something. One, two, three, four, Got to get over here. We got evidence, which is good to have at the beginning, I think, for this particular scenario. Let's try to get clues. Stand together. We got a weakness. Vicious blow. Uh, wow. I think I just want to dig through his for more assets. I'm going to go all five again. One, two, three, four, five. Just trying to dig for assets here. Actually, I shouldn't have put those in yet, probably, unless I, because I, I could have got another treachery. I didn't. I got Greta and Flesh Ward. Okay. <clears throat> I play out Greta. Hmm. Yeah, let's play out Greta. He's going to go first. Just all five of his money. I think we'll move and just start investigating stuff for his second action. This location is investigated using combat instead of the skill indicated by the investigation attempt. Uh, okay. So we will investigate then. Five to two, we're up by three. Uh, what is this? Minus three. If there's a monster enemy at your location, take one damage. So that is exactly how much we needed. <coughs> Nathaniel is done. Um, for her, I'm going to play Robes of Endless Night. So I can exhaust this to reduce the cost of a spell by one. And 
think that's it for cards I'm going to play. Let's go investigate it's over here for our second action. It's not really investigate, but just, you know, see what it is. Unhollowed ground. After you enter this location, test willpower four. If you fail, take one damage and one horror. That's got a pretty heavy shroud. And those two are not connected. Two clues per, or one clue per investigator. She's got a five. So five to four is plus one. I will commit prescient to it. So after you commit this to a skill test name, even odd or symbol, after this test ends, if a chaos token of the name type was revealed during this test, you may return a spell card from your hand to the discard pile. I don't have any in my discard pile, so I don't need to name anything. I just want the extra. That gives me a plus two. Um, <clears throat> and that shroud is kind of heavy there. I have clairvoyance though, right? I do, which I could play next turn because it'll be cheaper because of my robes. So what am I at here? Um, I'm testing against four. I was at five. That makes it six on that plus two. Minus one, so I pass. So I don't have to take the damage or the horror. So the question is, what do I do with my last action? I think I'll draw a card. The upgraded robes. The upgraded robes lets me uh, not uh, provoke attacks of opportunity playing spells out of my hand. So there's no enemies out, so I really don't need to flip her. All right, so we just go to draw and resource phase. A defiance, so we go from two to three here. Get a resource here, and we got a dodge. Okay, to the top of the round, or the top of the, yeah, top of the round. Doom, bad card. She's still our lead investigator. Uh, offer of power. You must either draw two cards and place two Doom on the current agenda, or take two Horror. This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Um, I don't want to put two doom out. She's got nine horror. She can take it. Uh, actually, no, she's got eight because of the one trauma that she's got. And Nathaniel's card, test three evasion for each point you fail by take a damage. Um, hmm. Okay, so I'm minus one. This could actually kind of hurt a lot. Okay, so just one, because I drew a zero. And I don't want to put it on Greta because she takes damage for us to help or to help us get clues. All right, so no enemies. Those were our bad cards. Now we go to our turn. So I'm going to use the robes to reduce the cost of clairvoyance. So I got to spend three resources to get clairvoyance out. And that'll get me three charges. Then I will use a charge as my second action to investigate. It's five to four, 
So I'm plus one. Um, I think I'll use my other robes, my upgraded ones, to give me another willpower. So that gives me plus two. Six to four. Six to four. Good thing I did it because that's a minus two. And then her third action, I'll use another charge and I'll toss out Crystal Pendulum to make it six to four as well. And I'll use her ability to draw three tokens. That's three. One, two, three. So this is not good. Um, actually, maybe it's okay. If I cancel this one, this is a plus one, and I was at plus two. So that makes me plus three, and this is a minus three. So that makes it zero. And there are no monsters, so I don't have to take damage. However, if the Elder Sign comes out, I do have to take a Horror because of Clairvoyance. So I cancel that, and these two get applied, um, but I get the clue. And that's the end of Jacqueline's turn. Okay, Nathaniel, he will... Investigate using his combat stat instead, which is a six to two, so he's up by four. Elder Signs, successful during attack. No, it's not an attack, so he still gets that. Second action to move, and why not? Third action, let's check out this one. This location is investigated using willpower instead of the skill indicated. Okay, so Jacqueline's gonna head over there because she's got a five. And it's two per. And that one is actually connected to the triangle location. That one and then another one that we haven't discovered. So that's his three actions. No monsters out. We will flip and flip. Get our cards. We got a defiance. So she needs a resource. And he needs a card. That's the event that gets us resources when we fight. And a resource. Top of the round. Bad cards. Dual minion. Okay, that's not good. His bad card is also a ghoul minion. Does he have a get over here? No. If she moves and just takes the attack of opportunity, maybe he moves and takes it. He could defeat, get a clue, move and engage for his three actions okay those are going to be yes those will be his actions um he's got two resources so what can he do
So his first action, we'll play clean them out. It's free, it's an event. So we'll get the bonus damage from his ability. To do a fight, when the action begins, gain two resources. Greta's giving us an extra attack here. Not an extra attack, an extra uh, stat. So R5 plus the one is six to his two is, we're up by four. Okay, we win by five. Um, so, uh, because of his ability, we get the extra damage, which is enough to defeat the ghoul minion. Uh, we should have gained our two resources when that started. So from two, we will go from two to four. Then we will deal a damage to Greta to discover a clue at our location. And we have to exhaust her to do that. So that was all our first action. Then our second action will be to move over here. And then we will... Um, we could just attack it, right? If we miss, then Jacqueline gets hit, but that might be okay. Let's just attack it in front of her. So we're at five, plus that is six, and we'll play Vicious Blow, because we've already used our special once per phase damage, um, but Vicious Blow... Do I want to do that, or do I want to save this card for fighting later? Oh, you know what? I also meant to play this card when we defeated the ghoul. This might actually make a difference. It's fast. Play after you defeat an enemy to draw two cards. Cost a resource. Another vicious blow and a physical training. I almost want to save these vicious blows for... Um, when we go to the last fight. If I just engage it and take, yeah, I'll just engage it off of her. Oh shoot, I gotta test. Hang on, let me think about this for a second. He's gonna have to test willpower. I could make it even. Just a damage and a horror, I guess. Okay, so second action is to move in there. I got to do the forced action on the location. Test four willpower. I'll toss safeguard uh, to make it four to four. And then I think I'm going to have him use Jacqueline's ability. To draw three. One, two, three. Ah, crud. This is a minus three. I need to cancel this so he doesn't take an extra damage. So we'll just have it auto fail. So he takes a damage and a horror from the location. Uh, we'll put a horror on her. Actually, I'm gonna put them both on her because we're probably not gonna need her ability much more. So, and then he'll engage 
for his third action. Okay, so that's his turn. Now Jacqueline will move for her first. Second will be to investigate, and it's willpower here instead of intellect. So it's five to two. We'll use the wild symbol on defiance to make it six to two. So we're up by four. And I will name the Cthulhu looking tentacle thing as the one to ignore. She can't use her ability because she's already used it. So we just draw one. This is her second action. Uh, we were up by four, so still a success. So now the age-old question of with one action left do I turn in the clues? I think normally you would say no but what if I get a mythos card that makes me lose a clue. I'm just going to gamble that I don't. So she'll get another resource, or do I draw a card? I don't want to draw into a weakness right now, so I'll get a resource. All right. So enemies attack. I think I'm just going to take the ghoul minions attack. One in one. Uh, one in flip. Okay, and then we'll ready everything. Draw and get resources. Uh, ritual candles. Uh, and a resource. One, two, three, four, five. So we're still good on our hand size. One, two punch is good. And a resource. Top of the round. Jacqueline's card. Yithian Observer. Pray fewest cards in hand. That's her. Ah, this is unfortunate. When Yithian Observer attacks you, discard one card at random from your hand. If you cannot, Yithian Observer deals plus one damage and plus one horror for this attack. Okay. Nathaniel's card is... Place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. If there are no cultist enemies in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it, shuffling the encounter deck. We do not have any in the discard pile. I'm sure we have an acolyte in here somewhere. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, 
because that's going to advance next turn anyway. So the Doom will come off of him and he can just stay down there. As long as he wants, because he has to spawn at an empty location. So it is our turn. Now I need to deal with this. I think the first thing I want to do though is just turn in the six clues before I lose any clues. Because there's no specific time on the card, so we get into the investigation phase and we just turn in the six. It's three per investigator. Scattered throughout the forest, you've seen glyphs and arcane sigils in various places, etched into the bark of trees, carved upon the faces of stones, and dripped in blood upon the ground. Though you cannot decipher these glyphs, you notice that most of them tend to face south. Following these signs leads you by twists and turns toward a cave in the darkest and coldest part of the forest. As you advance, shadowy figures emerge from the trees, blocking the only path to the cave. Put the set aside ritual site into play if it's not already in play. And it connects to the main path. Search the collection for each enemy recorded in your campaign log under Cultist Who Got Away and spawn those enemies at the main path, which is zero. Into the darkness. The remaining cultists have followed you into the woods to try to stop you, and now they block the path to your objective. They stand ominously beneath the overhanging trees, silent sentinels in the night. You must defeat them or sneak past if you're to gain access to the site of their ritual. Objective, if an investigator enters the ritual site, advance. All right. Is there any possible way I can evade that observer? I do have Hypnotic Gaze. He'll do damage back to himself. But her combat is just garbage right now. I don't have a get over here. I don't have my boxing gloves to search out a spirit event. Hmm. Can she take the attack of opportunity if she moves four, five out of nine? That would make her six out of nine, and I can put the health damage here. I gotta save this one-two punch for the last fight. Nathaniel attacks using one of the vicious blows to take out the ghoul minion for one action.
moves over for two. And we also need Lita because this is a monster. If we could get Lita out, I just don't have the right stuff out to do this attacking quickly. And no way to really dig for cards. She needs her upgraded Azure Flames. I mean, I could just leave her behind and run here and start the fight. I mean, I know we got to take care of this ghoul minion. And I got to use one of these vicious blows to take him out in one turn. So that makes my attack a six, seven to two, up by five and plus one damage. Okay. So that's one action. Actually, I think that's what I'll do. She's going to move first. I'm going to take that back that'll still be his first action but I'm gonna have Jacqueline go first she's gonna move she's gonna take the attack of opportunity from the Ithian observer but I remember reading on the attack of opportunity that it counts as an attack for cards I'm almost positive it said that uh, Attacks of opportunity count as enemy attacks for the purpose of card abilities, yes. So we'll play Hypnotic Gaze. It's fast. Play when an enemy attacks an investigator at your location. Cancel the attack, then reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag, and if it has a symbol on it, deal the attacking enemy's damage to itself. So we're canceling the attack. I'm going to use her ability to draw three out of here. One, two, three, and we're looking for a symbol. Okay. We got a symbol. So we will cancel these two, and this will be our token. So he does his damage back to himself on the attack of opportunity. So that's her first action. Then what? I mean, we have to try to fight or evade. I guess I could just not take actions. The downside is if I draw symbols that I could draw symbols that do damage and stuff to me. Evasion is minus one. I could make it even using defiance. And I could say ignore the tablet. That's the one that would do damage. Why not? We'll try to evade it. Four, five, six, 
for our second action. Use Defiance on it, ignoring the tablet, so we're at even, three to three. I need this to be a good pull. Minus two. We don't evade it, and I'll just forgo my last action. So Nathaniel took his first action to defeat the ghoul, so that's one. We'll move here for two, and I think we'll take the Yithian Observer as an engage action for three off of Jacqueline. Um, I had to pay two for the Hypnotic Gaze. My robes make it, uh, my robe makes it cheaper. I got a problem with spending resources. Okay, we go to we go to the next round. Or sorry, not the next round, the next phase, which is the enemy phase. And he will attack. If I don't cancel that. I could lose my good one-two punch. And I gotta cancel it for one. I need this card for the last fight. He's not a hunter. So we go to drawing cards and getting resources. Oh, and of course, put nihilism into play in your threat area. After you reveal, cancel, or ignore a tentacle token, take one damage and one horror. That's not that bad. We just won't <laughs> reveal, cancel, or ignore. Well, we can't do anything about revealing, but canceling and ignoring. We need a event, a fight event here that does plus one damage or our boxing gloves which we can't play or else we get attacked We gotta do three damage to this guy. That's like our entire turn. Resource, resource. Okay, top of the round. Doom takes it to four. We clear all Doom off the board. Throughout the woods, a shrieking cry echoes from somewhere deeper in the forest. A score of hideous voices answer the call, inhuman as the baying of hounds and yet articulate, repeating a singular name, Umerdhoth, Umerdhoth, Umerdhoth. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and discard cards from the top until a monster enemy is discarded. Spawn that enemy at the main path and place one doom on that enemy. Uh, ritual begins, Umordhoth, Umordhoth, Umordhoth. The chanting builds in intensity, echoing into the cold air of the night. The sparse clouds in the sky coalesce above the Arkham Woods, blotting out the faint light of the stars. Each enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade. Okay. So do we wait this one out? Just stay here and fight? And try to draw into some better cards? Put 
to draw until we find a monster. Ghoul minion. That was just the Doom token. So now we need bad cards. Test three evasion for each point you fail by. Take a damage. So we're down by one. Hey, Elder Sign is plus one. No damage. His bad card. Test three willpower for each point you fail by. Take a horror. So it's even, zero, zero. Is it worth it? It's not worth it. It's even. Oh, for each point you fail by, take a horror. Red is going to get one, and he'll take two. Okay, this is starting to get a little depressing. That needed to be the other way around. Well, actually, she can't take a whole lot of horror, much more horror either. So now it is my turn. I think I'm going to start with Jacqueline. First action is going to be to draw a card. Ineffable Truth is an evasion. Second action will be to draw another card. I believe. Scrying Mirror, and I might as well just draw another one. Another Scrying Mirror. Looking for Azure Flame, didn't get it. Over here, we're going to have to use this Vicious Blow. That'll be two more damage. Or Lita Chantler would have been good, too. And then the th second action could be attack again with one damage. And then one to the Ghoul minion. I think my weak hands at the beginning might actually cost me this game. Oh, they've got plus one fight and plus one evade, not plus one health, which is good. Okay. All right. Yeah. So he's going to attack the Yithian Observer using Vicious Blow. So he's five. Oh, Red is dead. Five, six to his five. I'm only plus one. Are you kidding me? I'm only plus one. Minus one. Good. Second action, we will attack him again. So now it's five to five. Man, I gotta hold on to this one two punch. Yeah, I guess. I will drop the physical training to make it plus one, and then Jacqueline will give him her ability to draw three. No. Uh, 
Uh, so either way, that's going to fail. If I cancel that, it's too much. Okay, last action will just be even attack against a Yithian Observer. Five to five. Number of monster enemies is played. It's too many. That's not good. So they get to go. Flesh Ward from his attack. Yeah, this is really bad. He's only got one horror left that he can take. All right. Draw cards. Oh, I'm not drawing what I need. I almost want to replay this with these decks and where I started because I know I can beat this scenario. Just these, I'm not getting the draw that I need. Randall is good, but I can't take the attack of opportunity to play him out. I've just got too many guys engaged with me. Doom. Test willpower five. You must either discard a card from your hand or take one damage and one horror. Uh, so that's even, zero to zero. Hey. Passed, what do you know? Acolyte. All right. Jacqueline goes first. And engages these guys off of him. Maybe just engages the ghoul minion off. Um, but then what? Her robes can take some damage. We play Ineffable Truth for one action. Engage, it'd be five to three for an evade. For her second action. So she's got one action left. Let's draw a card first. Astral Travel. Helps with willpower. Uh, 
No, that was stupid. I gotta back that up. I know it's I know the card what card's gonna be on top, but I need three actions. So put an asterisk next to this. I have to play, engage, and evade. That that's the three actions. Because of the robe, she gets a one resource discount to put Ineffable Truth out with three charges. She's going to engage the ghoul minion off of Nathaniel for her second action. And then she's going to do this to evade using her willpower instead of her evasion. And I'm going to add one because his evade becomes a three because of that. So that would be six to three. And I'm not revealing additional tokens because of this. So I'm up three. This is the number of monster min uh, monsters in play. There's only two monsters in play, so that's minus two. All right, so it's evaded. All right, that's her three. Now here. We start by attacking. And we got to do this. So it's five to five. We'll take Jacqueline's ability. Five to five. One, two, three. Yes, that helps. We cancel these two. Huh. Okay, that guy's dead. Now we'll play out our boxing gloves for three. We will play out Randall Cho for two. Healing three damage, but I don't think that's really gonna matter too much because he's got so much mental damage, but he Randall can take three. And those are his actions. Enemy phase, no hunters, so no attacking. So now we go to reset, flip that. That actually should have been exhausted because I got a cheap, I got a discount on Effable Truth. He resets and I'm actually gonna send him back over to Jacqueline. Top of the round. I still wonder if we don't try to build up some stuff. Well, let's draw our bad cards first. So we've got three out of five Doom. Her bad card is place two Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. If there are no cultist enemies in play, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it. Uh, whatever, they're both equidistance. It's fine. His bad card is a ghoul minion. I think this is okay. The Doom will make that trigger next round. So 
so let's just start with Nathaniel. No, actually, let's. Uh, Did I skip drawing cards and getting resources? I sure did. Because he doesn't have a resource. And I went straight to the top of the round. Okay, it's drawing cards. I knew what that was. Resource. Draw a card. Hey, that's good. Um, I really want her Azure Flame card. Let's start with Jacqueline. We'll try to evade. So it's uh, five to three. We will use astral travel to make it six to three. Do I use her ability? No, because of that stupid thing. Six to three. Shoot. Four out of nine. If I do this, I take an attack of opportunity. Ah, I gotta do it again. This time it's only plus two, though. Okay, minus two. And then I'm gonna draw a card because I only got one action left. Azure Flame, Azure Flame, nope. All right, that's her. Now, I will, f I will use this card, clean them out, fight when the action begins, gain two resources. Doing on time, we're good. This is an event with fight, so it'll be an extra damage. I'm at six to, he gets the bonus from that still, so six to three is plus three. Do I use Jacqueline's ability? Sure, it should be an advantage, right? So yes, we'll draw three. Cancel two non-tentacle, and ghoul minion is dead. Okay, so now we will search for a spirit event in the top. This is the lower glove, so in the top six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, no, Tommy Malloy. So the only one we got was Glory. Gets us more cards, I guess. That's a tactic event, not a spirit event. So we've got two actions left. We might as well attack that ghoul minion up there. Just to see if we can get rid of it. At least put some damage on it. Okay, so we're at six to three. Okay, 
Okay. Even Lita Chandler. Come on. What's going on? Six to three again. Okay, minus two. All right, so no enemies to attack us. We'll just reset. Draw and get resources. Oh, that helps us get resources. Come on. Deck's not cooperating, so we'll go from now. Ah, we'll just grab a one. And what are we going to get here? Oh, no. When you deal one or more damage to an enemy, take one damage. All right, so the Doom gets put on, and that would advance the agenda. A dark presence approaches, and you're assaulted by invisible pressures that bring you to your knees. A terrible force threatens to invade your mind and soul. Your throat clenches and your eyes water as the sensation burns through you. In player order, each investigator must test six willpower. Each investigator who fails must search the collection for a random basic madness weakness and put it into his or her hand. So... And add it to his or her hand. Hmm. Five. I'm going to go plus one. And plus two. Minus one. So she's good. Now we're in real trouble over here. He's at minus three already. So it doesn't matter what we draw. He's just going to get it. Oh, but if it's a symbol, it could be bad. Okay. Madness, 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 madness. Okay, these are the madnesses I've got. I think I was playing this putting them in the deck before. Hypochondria. After you take one or more damage, take one direct horror. Well, that's actually very terrible. Because, well, I guess Randall can take some horror. Uh, okay, Vengeance awaits. The world begins to shift and change as the ritual nears its conclusion. The air grows chilly. An entire forest is covered in a layer of rime. The trees bend unnaturally and their shadows lengthen into weird shapes. When this agenda advances, if the investigators are at Act 1, put it into play, put this into play. If the investigators are at Act 2 or 3, discard all enemies at the ritual site and spawn the set aside. And we're not there. All right. Bad cards. Test three willpower for each point you fail by. Take a horror. So that's five to three. Elder sign. I don't fail. His bad card is place one doom on the current agenda. Um.
I think I move in for my first. Action. At the end of the round, if there are fewer than two clues per investigator on ritual site, add two clues to it until it has two clues per investigator on it. One, two, three, four. And this. When you enter the cave, the air grows cold and your nostrils are assaulted by the pungent smell of blood and rot. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until one enemy is discarded. Discard from the top of the encounter deck until one enemy is discarded. Spawn each discarded enemy at the ritual site. Ah. Disrupting the ritual. The site of the cult ritual is inside a large cavern in a dark corner of the woods. In the center of the chamber is a candlelit circle marked by rocks and arcane ruins. Spin one clue as an action. Either test three willpower or three evade. If you succeed, place one clue on this act. If there are two clues per investigator on this act, advance. So we gotta get four clues on there. We have to look for, was it a monster or just an enemy? Just an enemy. Ghoul minion spawns and comes over here. We've got two actions left. Just attack, attack. The ghoul minion. Draw a spirit event and draw two more cards. Hopefully Tommy Malloy doesn't come out. Because that'll be the death of me. Yes, so we're at six to two now because he lost his bonus. Six to two, up by four. Oh, that's five. Well, now we're in serious trouble. Oh, no, because he can take the, the mental. Oh, but that's a... That's a direct horror. Shoot. Well, Nathaniel's dead. Is direct horror, can that go on? Uh, can that go on allies? Um, what does direct mean? Ability causes the card to take direct damage. That damage must be assigned directly to the specified card and cannot be assigned or reassigned elsewhere. Oh, that miss. I think he's dead. Uh, with these two things combined, I should have gotten rid of those. This is going to be weird because Jacqueline's going to have to come in and engage this guy off for him not to die. Is that what's going to have to happen? So he's going to forgo his third action. Should have gotten rid of these. Should 
She draws, moves, and engages. He has to be done. She's going to draw. Move and engage for her three. So then he attacks and we'll put a damage on the robes. Yeah. I think that's it. Resources and cards. Familiar spirit. Deck is not being kind to me. Uh, relentless is not going to do anything. So we'll go from four to five. And go to the top. Put Frozen and Fear into play. So that's going to make stuff take cost extra. Cannot play assets or events. That's not too bad, actually. I think I need to get rid of I need to get rid of hypochondria for two actions and then I think I'll draw. We got evidence. Now over here, could try to evade it even. That'll take two actions. Should I evade it even or fight it even? What the hell? We'll fight it even. Two to two. So that costs two actions and another action fight again. Minus one. Not good. So he attacks. That's that one. We'll take the actual damage on that. She's at six out of nine damage on her mental. There are no hunters. Then go, end of her turn, she needs to test this. Six to three. We'll make it seven to three. Are you kidding me? That was a fail. Astral travel, I don't need you. 
So from four to five, five to six, Test three, astral travel will again make it seven to three. Ravenous school, pray lowest remaining health. Six, oh great. And they are both at the same location, so I do think this comes out attacking Jacqueline. You know, some enemies will pursue these. If an enemy was about automatically engaged investigators, the case of multiple options whom to engage. But I think because they're at the same location, it follows the prey rule on its card. Just like if it has a spawn, it would go somewhere else like those guys. What do I do? two, three. I was saving this in case I needed to get to the big fight, but it's starting to get a little too close. First action, we'll play this upgraded one-two punch as a fight. two resources. So I'll just flip the three. You automatically succeed and deal plus one damage for this attack. So we'll use his ability, so that's three total damage onto this Ravenous Ghoul. And it's defeated. Then I'm going to play Glory. It's fast for one resource to draw two cards after you defeat an enemy. Oh wait, no. First, I'm going to use my boxing gloves to search out a spirit event. I'll do that first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stand together. Monster Slayer's a spirit event. Get over here. Counter Punch and another Monster Slayer. I think I'll take Monster Slayer. Actually, with Tommy Malloy in here, uh, I don't know if I want to play that card to draw two cards. My second action is going to be to play this Monster Slayer 
card that I just got to fight to deal plus one damage. I'm going to fight this ghoul minion here at six to two up by four and it's plus one damage. So I'm up by four. And this is minus so the number of monsters in play is only one, okay. So it's defeated because of the extra damage. Then I'm gonna play evidence fast after you play after you defeat an enemy. And I defeated a com enemies with a combined total of at least four printed health this turn. So I get to discover two clues at my location. One and two. So for my third action, I'm going to spend a clue for this up here to test three willpower and add one from physical training. I should have spent one of these for evidence. I don't think I did. So I'm up by one. This is a long shot, but what I got. Oh shoot. I should be I should have taken two damage from that weakness. But I'm, I'm up by one. This is a long shot. Should I add something? No, I should save it for that. Stupid frozen in fear. There's not very many successes in here. Hey, look at that. Uh, so we actually put it on there. 25% of the way there. Now sh she gets a couple of turns. Our investigate is three to three. We use a couple scrying mirrors to make it five to three. Okay. And we use clairvoyance as our second action. So we're five to three again. Minus five, that's a fail. Then we will spend a clue to test five to three to turn the clue in. Elder sign. Two out of four. No enemies to attack. Oh, end of her turn. We test six to three to get rid of that. Actually, I, I'm not going to do that. I don't care. I'm not moving or fighting. I'll save that for turning in over here, I guess. So five to three. This is minus two. Place a doom on the nearest enemy. That kind of sucks. Because now that's going to advance, and I think that means the big bad guy comes out. Okay, cards, Dark Prophecy, uh, and a 
resource card dodge yes and a resource All right, so we would put one out, but that's gonna be five total because that thing just came out. The investigators are at act two or three, discard all enemies at the ritual site, which is none, and spawn the set-aside Umerthoth. Hunter, massive. Umerthoth gets plus four health per investigator. At the end of each investigator's turn, you ready him. If you control Lita Chandler, it's only after her. You throw Lita Chandler to him her doth to spare your lives. So what does massive mean again? He's, he's engaged with everybody. With him coming out, I think I'm doomed. A ready enemy with the massive keyword is considered to be engaged with each investigator at the same location as it. It attacks both of us. Uh, so we have to worry about attacks of opportunity. Uh, put the current act and agenda with the devourer below. This card is both the current act and a current agenda. Oh, so now the clues don't even matter. Shoot. So close. I get so close every time. I think if I had had better card draws, I could have done this. Uh, I think we're just screwed because I don't have the ability to fight this guy. And I still haven't even drawn the encounter cards yet. Two doom on the nearest cultist enemy is not really going to matter. Wizard of the Order. Spawn him up there. I could take one attack. But he's got 14 health, and I can only take one attack. His combat is five, my combat is six. I can't do 14 damage. I needed to get my combat spells over here. Dang. That one doom that came out on that cultist, if I had one more turn, I had a chance of getting, um, it was a, Long stretch chance, but I had a chance of getting two more clues put on disrupting the ritual. All right, so we will attack him. I'll use Relentless to make it seven to 
five, so it's a plus two. Uh, the number of monster enemies in play. He is not a monster, so that's a zero. 13 health left. I gotta take a damage because of that. Four, five, six. Oh, I'll die. No, one can go here. I'll have one health left. Okay, I'm just gonna keep attacking him. Still plus, two, or no, now I'm only plus one. Hey, a plus one. Still plus one. Miss. And she's not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, this is pointless. Unless she draws Lita at the end. I don't know how you can fight this guy and like beat him. You'd have to be so lucky. So she's not going to do anything. Because if I try to draw cards or play cards or anything, she'll take attacks of opportunity from him. I shouldn't have sat in the main path for so long either. I thought when I came over here, he came out. That would have given her maybe more time to work on getting clues and putting them on the, disrupting the ritual. So we go to his turn. We'll attack here first. Because it says that the lead investigator gets to pick the order of the attacks because he's going to attack both of them because he's massive. Randall will take the three mental and one of the health. Uh, so Nathaniel takes two. Um, because he missed one, so he still got one. He's at seven out of nine. And five out of six mental. Then the attack on Lita uh, will dodge. Play when an enemy attacks and investigates your location to cancel the attack. End of the round, we're, we should put more clues out technically. Two per investigator. Doom doesn't matter, but I'm sure we still do bad cards. Place one doom, doesn't matter. Place one doom, doesn't matter. Oh, I didn't draw cards. Parallel fates, so from six to seven. Flesh ward, not gonna matter. Just see how much damage we can get in from Nathaniel. He's up by one. Okay. So that's eight. If he does one more, he's going to hurt himself. Miss. And hit. But he takes himself out with nine damage. So he's toast. And she can't even damage him with her weak attack. She didn't draw anything here. She doesn't have a high enough evade. 
Yep. So when it gets to his turn, she'll attack he or he will attack her and she'll be dead. So let's le read our resolution. If no resolution was reached, too frightened to face her fate, Lita flees into the night. She realizes that she has failed and Omardoth's vengeance will pursue her wherever she goes. The creature's tendrils spread throughout the city of Arkham, searching for her. It lurks in the darkness of every corner, tugging at the seams of reality. But Lita is nowhere to be found, so the creature dwells in the shadows to this day, searching, killing. Their campaign log record that Arkham succumbed to Omardoth's terrible vengeance. Each surviving investigator is killed, and the investigators lose. All right. Yeah, so I think it might have been beatable. Uh, I think I got really bad opening hands. Uh, I said it a couple times during the playthrough already. So there's Azure Flame was on the very bottom. Where's the other one? Not that far from the bottom. Anything we could have gotten his counter, his upgraded counter punch, his better boxing gloves. He just didn't get anything at the beginning either. So that's it for Night of the Zealot, the starter deck playthroughs. I'm going to build some decks with non starter deck. Uh, investigators to go through Dunwich Legacy next so that'll be a longer campaign you know more upgrades um, to the decks and things uh, so I was 0 for 3 uh, maybe the first one doesn't count as 0 for 3 uh, because I sacrificed Lita to Umardot the first time and at least my two investigators were not uh, killed but I feel like um, I, I could not have done any better on the second scenario. I mean, I got all six of the cultists. Uh, this is just rough. And I've, I've read that, you know, th that they put a pretty difficult, I mean, this was a very difficult, um, you know, starter core set uh, experience for, for the game. And this was so close. Maybe one or two more turns, I probably could have had this. Probably could have had it solved. So it was close. Okay, I hope you enjoyed all of these starter deck um, playthroughs here. And I hope you're enjoying the other series on the channel. I'll see you in the next one.